Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of y over x equals y times the square root of x squared plus y squared all over x squared. And we're going to try to find an expression for f. In other words, we're going to try to find f of x in terms of x. Or you can use any variable. Sometimes when we say we're trying to solve for f of x, it's not the same x we're talking about because variables can be interchanged very easily. You can use t if you don't want to use the same x, that's perfectly fine. So how do you solve these kinds of problems? Well, I think there are different kinds of functional equations, in my opinion. The ones that are easier to solve are the ones with a single variable. For example, if I gave you something like f of 2x plus 1 equals x squared, and you're trying to find an expression for f of x, all you had to do was basically replace x with x minus 1 divided by 2, which is the inverse of this function, by the way. Suppose you call this g of x, you would basically compose this with g inverse from the right, and that would give you f. Because if you have something like f of g, and then you compose that with g inverse, then g and g inverse will give you the identity. In other words, they kind of cancel out. I know it's not a rigorous explanation, but you end up with f in this case. Make sense? So that's the main idea. And because we have a single variable, it's fairly easy to solve. Or if you don't know how to proceed, or if you don't know the inverses, you could still set this equal to something. For example, you could say, hey, suppose this is equal to t, or maybe I shouldn't use t because that's confused with the plus sign, maybe y, and then from here, solve for x and plug it on the right-hand side. You would get the exact same answer when you did that, right? It would just be different variables. So these are the easier type of functional equations. And there are the other kind of functional equations, such as we have two variables. For example, f of x plus f of y is equal to something like, let's say, 3x plus y plus 1. I don't know if this one has a good solution. I totally just made it up. But uh, for these kinds of equations, what we usually do is replacing x and y with certain values, such as 0 or 1, and doing it on both sides will give you some equations. We'll get some ideas about whether uh, f of 0 is defined, f of 1 is defined, or whatever the values are. And sometimes we can get something like f of negative x equals f of x, which means that's an even function, or if it's bijective, so on and so forth, right? Or, of course, the domain matters. If it's from reals to reals, then that will be a different story. Uh, or if it's just integers to integers, then we can only use integer values. Make sense? And the functional equations that work with natural numbers or integers only are kind of easier to solve because you can plug in successive values and eventually get something meaningful. Make sense? So those are the different kinds of equations. Obviously, we can have three variables too, or we can even have two functions in the equation, such as something like f of g of x plus h of y equals something else, right? Obviously, these equations are going to be harder to solve, but what about this one? This one has two variables, so it probably falls into the second category where we have the uh, at least two variables in the equation. So that kind of gives you more freedom. For example, you can just replace x with 1, and that should give you something, right? So that's one of the things you can do. Or can I replace y with 0? Yes, but you can't do it with x equals 0, because that will be problematic. Obviously, when you have a function like this with fractions or quotients, you don't want to make the denominator 0. Okay, let's go ahead and see if we can use some uh, particular values for x and y, and then see if we can get to something from here. Okay? But that's basically the different kinds of functional equations. Obviously, the first kind is fairly easy to solve. Okay, for this one, uh, first of all, I want to try this. I want to replace y with 0 if that's going to give me something, right? If y is equal to 0, then I'm getting f of 0 divided by x equals 0 times something divided by x squared. Since I did not replace x with anything, x stays as is, and y is just replaced with 0. Does that make sense? And this obviously gives you, if x does not equal 0, x should never be equal to 0, by the way, you get f of 0 equals 0. Now, is this information helpful? I don't know. Maybe it will be in the future, but that's something good to know. At least we have an idea. Now, another thing you can do is you can replace y with x, right? Obviously, you have that kind of freedom. So if you do that, that's going to give you something good because uh, inside the parentheses, we're going to have f of 
x over x, which is 1. And then on the right hand side, we're replacing y with x. By the way, when I say y equals x, it just means, it doesn't mean replace x with y. It just means y with x. So you, sometimes people just write with an arrow or they'll say px comma y, meaning that uh, x stays the same and, you know, or I probably did it wrong. It should be px comma x. So px comma y basically means x is x and y is y. This just means x is x, y is also x. So everything turns into x. In other words, does that make sense? It's not the same thing as replacing x with y because uh, that could give you something different. I'm just saying that could, right? So if you replace x with uh, y with x, you're going to get x here and then x inside and x at the bottom. And hopefully this is going to give you something nice. X over X is 1, so that's going to give you F of 1. And from here, again, we, we need to make some assumptions. Is X positive or negative? Because when I take the square root, it's going to make a difference. But suppose X is positive first, that's going to give you square root of 2X. So X multiplied by square root of 2X, that's what it is, right? Divided by X squared, X squared is going to cancel out. And we're going to end up with f of 1 equals square root of 2. Now, this doesn't really give me a lot of information. I probably need a little bit more than this, right? Don't you think? So let's go ahead and see how we can actually solve this problem. I mean, these values kind of give us an idea, but not good enough, right? So here's what we're going to do. Because of the nature of the problem, and I'll probably be presenting two methods here, uh, is that let's go ahead and do this. First method... And I said because of the nature of this problem. What is the nature of this problem? If you look at this problem very carefully, you hopefully notice that this is homogeneous. What does that mean? It just means that uh, we can change the variable. In other words, y over x can be designated a different variable. And in this case, I'm going to use t. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. I don't want to use t. t. How about u? <laughs> okay. We'll use u, okay? The letter u, I mean. And that's going to mean uh, you replace y over x with u, but not only that, because x is not 0, this also means y equals ux. This is what I meant by change of variables. So we're going to go ahead and plug it in here and here. And since this is u, that's going to be f of u equals y, which is ux, multiplied by x squared plus y is going to be replaced with ux, so it's going to be u squared x squared. And then we're going to divide it by x squared again. So let's go ahead and simplify this expression one more time. Now, this, inside the parentheses, I can take out an x squared. And that'll be 1 plus u squared. But of course, that's still inside the radical. And again, that it comes to a point where you kind of need to decide if x is positive, this is what happens, okay? If x is positive, this is going to become x x times x is going to be x squared, and it's just going to cancel out. We know x does not equal 0, and we're going to end up with u times 1 plus u squared. But this is f of u, so if you wanted to find an expression for f of x, or f of t, whatever, it's going to be x times the square root of 1 plus x squared. Make sense? What happens if x is less than 0? This is why the domain is important. If I said, okay, if this is from positive reals to positive reals, then you would know that x must be positive, right? And if x is negative, you're going to get a negative sign. The only difference is just going to be that you will be getting something like this. Make sense? And of course, the output is still going to be positive. So I could probably say, hey, this is from reals to positive reals or negative positive reals to re positive reals. Okay? So that's pretty much the first method. And let's go ahead and quickly talk about the second method. I think the second method is something that I discovered later on while I was kind of, you know, solving this problem during the first method at the beginning, I kind of discovered, I think it'll work. I hope so. Since we're trying to find f of something with a single variable, right? Why not replace x with 1? That should do the trick, right? If you do that, you're going to get f of y over 1, which is f of y, equals y times. Now, x is 1, so that's just going to be y squared plus 1 and divided by 1 squared, which is 1. So this means f of y equals y times the square root of y squared plus 1. And then if you wanted to write it as f of x, that will be x times the square root of x squared plus 1. Now, here's the million dollar question. With the first solution, I got two answers uh, depending on the x values. But here, 
I only got one answer. Why is that happening? Because I used x equals 1. If I use x equals negative 1, would I get a different answer? That would be a good question, right? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.